Hello everyone, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. Today we're going to look at a very important topic used in electronics. I'm talking about the use of a protection diode in relays, specifically in the coil of our relays. Since we often use different relays on our electronic boards, like these here, for our electronics projects. And as you can see, a relay is composed of a coil. However, in this case, we're going to talk about how a component like a regular diode can protect our electronic boards. For example, here I have this electronic board where we can see that there are several diodes right next to the relays. Here I have several relays. And I even have a larger one which also has a diode right next to its coil. So today we're going to talk about what these diodes are for and what would happen if they weren't there. This and more in this video. So, without further ado, let's continue with the video. But first, a big hello to all my subscribers, those who comment, and those who share the videos, and a special shout out to channel member Chris. Chris, thank you for your support. Seriously, thank you very much. And if you're not a member yet, you can become one in the members section. So, without further ado, let's get on with the video. Okay, before we look at how to protect our electronic boards, let's see how relays work. First, relays have a coil and several contacts. For example, here I have a relay, and this would be its coil. The coil has two terminals, to which I have to apply positive and negative voltage of a specific voltage. How many volts? Well, that will depend on the relay. For example, this one needs 12 volts, but there are relays that need 24 or 5 volts. Now the coil of a relay looks a lot like a spring, like this one here. When I apply pressure to the spring, it compresses. But when I stop applying pressure, the spring will violently decompress in the opposite direction. As you can see, it decompressed violently and in the opposite direction. The same thing happens with relays or the coils of those relays. That is, I can apply positive here and negative here. But when I stop applying voltage, the coil will deliver a voltage higher than the one I applied. But with reverse polarity, that is, negative here, and positive here. So how can we know that's true? Well, we have to use the oscilloscope to confirm it. Very well. Now let's confirm that our relay delivers a voltage with reverse polarity. For that, we will use the oscilloscope. We are using 50 volts per division. Let's energize our relay with a 12 volt power supply. Pay attention to the oscilloscope. Nothing happens there, but when I disconnect the power, see what happens. There you can see that I have a fairly high voltage. As you may recall, I told you that a coil behaves like a spring, which will deliver a very high voltage, but only for a short time. Here we have a fairly large voltage. We have 50, 100, and 200 volts. We have more than 200 volts. Let's move the reference a little. There, now let's test again. When I energize it, nothing happens. But when I de-energize it, pay attention to the screen. There you can see, I have almost 300 volts of inverted voltage. 
and in that way our relays deliver that voltage which is very dangerous for our electronic boards. So we've just seen what the coil of a relay delivers. Now let's see how to protect our electronic boards, or how this signal damages the electronic components. Very well. Now let's see how the protection circuit works. But first, let's analyze this circuit. We can observe that we have a BJT transistor, a push button, a resistor, and our relay. When we press the push button, our transistor will act as a switch, activating the coil of our relay. And in this case, it will change the status of your contacts. In this way. However, that's not the problem. The problem arises when the coil is deactivated. When it's deactivated, it will deliver a fairly large voltage with reverse polarity. That is, we'll have negative here. And positive here. Depending on its value, this voltage could damage our transistor. Therefore, it's necessary to place a protection component on the coil pins. However, in this situation, what we're going to do is visualize that reversed voltage. How can we do that? Well, we're going to place an LED like this. Remember that LEDs have polarity, so you have to be careful when connecting it. The cathode must be connected to positive, and the anode to one end of the coil. We activate the relay. And nothing happens. Now watch the LED. Again, watch the LED. As you just saw, it lights up. We press it. Nothing happens. And when we release it, the LED lights up. And in this way we confirm that the relay coil delivers an inverted voltage. However, keep in mind that the LEDs only need 2 volts to activate. And to perform several tests, we need to increase the LED activation voltage. Therefore, we have to use another component. For the following tests, we'll use this neon lamp which needs at least 80 volts to activate. Note that this has no polarity, therefore it can be placed in any position. Pay attention to the neon lamp. Nothing happens. Why doesn't the neon lamp light up? Let's look at the circuit again. Remember that the voltage delivered by the relay coil will fall on the collector of our transistor. And if the voltage is high enough, our transistor will short circuit. Now, each transistor has a characteristic called the collector emitter voltage, which indicates the voltage at which the transistor will short circuit, allowing current to flow. In this case, we're using a BC547, which has a collector emitter voltage of 45 volts. Therefore, the current will prefer to pass from collector to emitter instead of passing through the neon lamp.
for the lamp to light up, we need to use a transistor with a higher collector emitter voltage. For this, we'll use another transistor. The 2N5551 transistor has a collector emitter voltage of 160 volts. Pay attention to the neon lamp. As you just saw, the neon lamp lights up. This means that the current is not passing through the transistor, but rather through the lamp. In other words, the current is passing directly through the lamp. The transistor will short circuit when the voltage exceeds 160 volts. However, the lamp only needs approximately 80 volts to activate. Therefore, our transistor is being protected by the neon lamp. And in this way, we can see how a diode protects a transistor. When the diode's activation voltage is lower, all the current passes through it, protecting our transistor. So, in this way, we were able to see it visually. Now, to understand it better, Let's look at it on the oscilloscope. There, we will see how the voltage generated by the coil of our relay is behaving. Very good. Now let's see how our neon lamp protects our transistor. For this, we will use the oscilloscope at 50 volts per division. Let's press the button. Now, pay attention to the oscilloscope. And as you can see, we have a signal with reverse polarity. We have 50, 100 volts. That is to say, the neon lamp has just activated at 100 volts, which indicates that it is protecting our transistor. This transistor has a collector emitter voltage of 160 volts. Therefore, it doesn't short circuit because the neon lamp activates long before the transistor. Now, what happens if I put an LED instead of the neon lamp? Well, the LED will activate at 2 volts, so we won't have this inverted 100 volt voltage. It would only have to be 2 volts. We press. As you can see, the LED lights up, but we don't have any reverse voltage. We're on the 50 volt scale, meaning we don't even reach 50 volts. Why? Because the LED activates at 2 volts. Therefore, our transistor is completely protected. Remember that the circuit would be this one here. Now, instead of an LED, a conventional diode is usually used. Like this one here, or like this one here. This is a high-speed diode, the 4148. And this is the 1N4007. Either diode can be used, but you must be careful when placing it. The cathode goes towards the positive terminal and the anode to the other end of the coil. Now we're going to replace the LED with the general purpose diode. We press. 
As you can see, we have no signal. Therefore our transistor is completely protected. And in this way you can protect your electronic boards using a diode. Alright guys, this is how the video would end. But don't forget that if you like the video, a like really helps the channel. See you in the next video. Bye bye.